Good day to everyone who is uh, tuning in and who will be watching the recording later. So we, um, it's been a while because uh, myself and the team have been busy traveling the world, uh, different events, networking, getting clients, talking to partners and, and, and much more. So um, we haven't had many, many big news announcements, um, progress reports in the last month or, or two, but that doesn't mean that um, nothing has been happening, on the contrary. So the team has been working very hard to make some things into reality. And I will use the CMA session to answer the community questions, as well as um, give some updates on, on what we've been working on and uh, what you can expect going forward. Hey, Russ, welcome to the stream. So oh, how do we know if a company isn't bankrupt in this long bear market? Well, uh, as, as you see, the team is still working. That means everyone is getting paid. That means we are not bankrupt. And the reason we're not bankrupt is because um, we actually um, didn't spend as much as we could during the, the bull market. And, and now we have funds to survive this bear. And uh, if, if the bear market is too long, we can always raise another round. If, if we so choose to, there's been uh, plenty of investor interest in, in Parsec because Parsec is infrastructure and we've seen both Web2 and Web3 VCs um, very interested in, in participating if we ever do another fundraising round. But right now, um, we have plenty, plenty of runway. Given that crypto has never existed in recessions, negative global macro markets, what do you expect to happen to crypto's market cap? And uh, how does Parsec plan to navigate these waters? Um, not financial advice. I, I, um, I'm I not a macroeconomist, um, but um, I do think that uh, there's still more pain to come for all markets. So that means uh, stocks, bonds, um, crypto, everything. But that should be seen as an opportunity for those who believe in the space. So myself personally, I'm, I'm uh, awaiting lower prices because... Uh, Whatever uh, stable coins and fiat I, I have uh, left, I um, will deploy um, at, at at those prices. In my opinion, a leg lower is is likely. So um, and when does it resolve? Well, th the bad news is that this is probably probably the worst financial crisis in in my or your lifetimes. So probably worse than 2008, 2001, and so on. Um, the good part is that if you survive this and you still have some capital to deploy, then you can probably uh, ride an up-only market for the next 10 years. So um, I'm personally, you know, I'm no stranger to, to bear markets. Um, 2018, 19 was different because macro was much, much better. But uh, in terms of crypto, I mean, it was dead. It was uh, it, it was impressive, like, like how how little interest was. So even this bear market, which is much more severe because of macro, I feel it's easier to navigate because uh, now there's no question that the blockchain is is the future. And even and you know in these market conditions, we see a lot of interest in in Parsec, both from clients and potential investors. So. I actually feel much better than in 18 and 19 because uh, back then when I was pitching Parsec to prospective clients, everyone said like, why do we need blockchain data? Why, why would we want to monitor the blockchain? So there was no adoption, no DeFi, no applications, nothing. So it's a, it's a different ball game. Um, yeah, it will probably get bad. I'm, I'm not very bullish for this year and uh the release for the first half of next year, but who knows? Um, things can turn around really fast. Um, so we plan to do what we do best and what we did uh, well in 1819, we survived and uh, we built. And once uh, the market came back, everyone appreciated what we've done 
in, in, in the bear market because everyone else um, quit. So that means less competition, a lot of projects will die and um, attention will be more concentrated, especially to, to fundamental uh, technologies. What's the current plan on adding new blockchains to Tsunami? Or is the focus currently on expanding the functions Tsunami offers? So this is one thing we've been uh, working on um, during uh, the last two months. We've actually added, uh, integrated two new blockchains already. And another two we will start integrating shortly. So that's a lot of uh, blockchains. And we will be doing... Uh, joint co-marketing with the teams of these layer one layer two blockchains so that means joint announcements amas developer workshops uh so expect to um see more eyes on on the tsunami api and and the data lakes through these cross promotions in light of the recent uh, news of Google using either scan, have the team reached out to them to demo Tsunami. It's funny because as soon as I saw that news, I immediately told my BD team to go reach out to Google that they can just plug in the Tsunami API, not only get Ethereum balances, but any balances, tokens, NFTs, all chains. So um, I'll let you know how that goes. And on, on, on that topic, so we finally uh, made some great strides uh for for building use cases uh, for web 2 companies so i don't know how long it's going to take to get these things live but uh finally things are moving finally these web 2 enterprises are serious about integrating blockchain which which hasn't been the case in the last few years When can we expect uh, new information on the enhanced tokenomics, which were mentioned last time? Well, we expect the tokenomics to go live uh, probably first half of the next year. Um, won't give exact promises, Q1, Q2, maybe depending on, on other things, but um, it's gonna be a revamp model. We feel that uh, can really bring network effects and more utility. So as mentioned, we're planning a Parsec DAO, give holders voting power over certain things. Uh, including some of the treasury um, and and things like um, using the treasury for grants incentives to grow the Parsec network. And one of the core concepts is is uh, revolves around the Pars public SDK that, that we are building. The public SDK allows third-party developers, anyone from outside, to easily build interesting data lakes. So API endpoints for getting use case specific or DAP specific data for interesting um, use cases and deploy it and run it on the Parsec network for free. And to do that, they will have to stake PRQ tokens. It can be a public uh, data lake they built or, or a premium one, which they can monetize with a revenue share models. So we feel this will get a lot of adoption as, as we will um, be doing all kinds of initiatives to get developers building interesting data lakes on, on the Parsec network and putting them on the public marketplace. When will there be more adoption? Also, when will there be more IQ pools? When is NFT rental marketplace going live? Um, more adoption, well, you could argue that there is more adoption actually. So with the release of Tsunami and Data Lakes, um, we've onboarded a lot of corporate customers, um, a lot of developers, a lot of DeFi teams, CeFi teams, um, including like market makers, infrastructure providers, DeFi protocols. Um, so I see this uh, accelerating as we add more blockchains and we, um, enhance our data lakes as, as well as uh, we build new ones. Currently have the NFT data lake live and uh, that allows you to get ownership, history, anything uh, related to collections and NFTs instantly. We have also indexed all the metadata. So things like traits and rarities and things like that you can get through, through the API. 
and we will soon add uh, the image URL. So you can pull the actual JPEGs of the NFTs through the NFT uh, data lake, which means that if you're building an NFT marketplace or you have an NFT marketplace in your game, you can build pretty much the entirety of the backend on Parsec easily using the NFT API. And we'll be doing other APIs as well. Uh, we have a data lake for fungible tokens, like token balances, um, ownership history, and we'll be doing protocol specific data lakes so in collaboration with some of the biggest uh, DeFi protocols. So you can expect that to, to come out. Uh, when more IQ pools? Well, as you know, we've been focusing on the NFT version of, of the IQ protocol. And we actually have uh, some very, very solid projects asking us uh, to, uh, to deploy on the fungible token version to do their pools. But we haven't been able to service them because it's all hands on deck um, for the NFT version. And the NFT rental marketplace will go live this year for sure. And um, the reason we haven't put it live is because um, we have um, a lot of competitors popping up. Uh, some of the, most all of their launches have been flops and some have even shut down already. And that is why, because they built generic rentals, something that's not catered to a specific use case or vertical. So this is why we haven't yet released it. We're building up awesome functionality inside the protocol, things like uh, renting for tournaments with time-based cancellations, um, a guild scholarship management with, uh, with automated payouts and, and a billion more things. So it's going to be the most complex um, rental protocol ever. And, and since it caters to specific use cases and solves the pain points that uh, the others don't, we expect this to drive its success. But uh, the code base has been expanded a lot. It's pretty huge. And, and this is why it hasn't gone live yet. A regular event recap for all of the events Parsec attended in September. Should we expect news partnerships coming soon? Anything you can tell us? So, as I said, uh, two blockchains integrated, more coming, co-marketing announcements with, uh, with the teams of those uh, layer one, layer two blockchains. Um, we have onboarded new clients and new partners, so more of that coming, and we are going to be collaborating with some DeFi protocols, some of the biggest, to do uh, dedicated public data lakes for their protocols, and we will co-market them as well. And that's, uh, that's just a small part. As I mentioned, we're working with some Web2 companies. Uh, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Uh, given that the graph is a very big competitor, what marketing strategies have been undertaken to convert some of the Graph's existing clients over to Tsunami? Now, it's important to understand that the Graph is, a, they position themselves as, as a decentralized network, right? So it's, it's a bit do-it-yourself. If you want help, go to the developer Discord. So we are um, a software company that is building um, centralized, decentralized and distributed solutions for data. And it's, it's a different approach. Honestly, um, all the teams we've approached on these conferences, they are unhappy with any current data provider they have because it's either slow, it's expensive, it's hard to maintain, it's complex, uh, it takes a lot of time and resource. It's, uh, it just doesn't work. So we feel like that there's a huge gap to become a leading data provider in this space simply because we remove all those pain points, like speed, scalability, throughput, reliability. You know, we, we are one of the best, if not the, the best at those things. And in addition, data lakes, almost no one offers anything similar. Then we have um, data hubs, storage. It's a full suit solution, removing any, any layers of complexity, saving cost, time, and, and resource. So I feel like there's a legitimate chance of, of taking the mar market leading position in providing data just because um, everything else um, doesn't work as, as it is supposed to.
Please explain the token burn last summer. And if that means we really have a max supply of 310 million or still 500 million as listed. This is a critical matter for potential new investors. So uh, the total supply is 310 million. We burned almost 190 million and those were burned uh, because those were unsold tokens from the original IEO in 2019 and uh, a huge chunk of team and advisory tokens just to make it more fair and balance it out. And if you look at CoinGecko, they show the correct max supply of 210 million. If you look at coin market cap, then you I'm gonna open it right now. The thing with coin market cap is we actually submitted all the correct information. But the way they show things is that it said that the max uh, supply for some reason is listed as the 500 million. And I, as I understand, we cannot change it. But the total supply is listed at 310. So, so it's just a way of showing that there was 500, now it's 310. And uh, I'm not sure if there's anything we can do to really, really change it. Do you have any targets or estimates set on, on Parsec becoming operational and profitable? Um, to be fair, in 2020, 2021, Parsec was profitable, but not uh, solely because of any kind of uh, revenues. Um, it's also because of the treasury managements and investments we, we did. But um, to become profitable, like without these kinds of treasury management will probably take uh, some years depending on how much we burn and spend on aggressive growth. Have there been any team member exits? Um, not, not much. I mean, um, I know we had a social media manager who left um, some rotation in, in engineering teams, but, uh, Almost, almost none. Would you consider making an analysis page showing the actual usage of Parsec? For example, the number of queries. Yes, this is uh, in the works and, and this will show um, activity queries and, and, and everything. So that will be a nice, nice dashboard for the community or anyone who, who wants to see the usage. Team. Any time frame for the more normy friendly app for using data lakes. Um, so we are have on the roadmap a product called Atlas. Atlas is an application layer front end. It's uh, this is something. It's an app that anyone can use. It's a bit of an explorer. It's a mix of an explorer and something that Nansen and Dune Analytics have not directly competing with them, some overlap, of course, uh, but it, it will be different. It will focus on strictly on on-chain data and uh, there will be certain widgets that you can use to cross-correlate things and, and explore certain dApps and protocols, their usage, what's happening um, and, and more. It's, it will be built on top of our data lake APIs. And um, the ETA is, uh, is next year, H1. Hopefully. Has Parsec explored blockchain consulting service rather than building products? Many have not been successful like NK's uh, triggers. Um, we've actually done on-demand custom work and data work. If you remember the KuCoin hack and the 125 projects, if you remember the uh, paid network, Coin Metro, uh, Bondly, and, and a lot of others. So we actually did a lot of on-demand custom data work. Uh, we did the ocean protocol integration and, and uh, some other things. We've done some, but our goal is to productize those use cases. So for example, we did snapshots for, for these projects and run the scripts to get all the balances of all holders at certain pre-hack moments and blocks. Uh, so 
we're going to productize it and make a snapshot data lake. So an API where you can easily get to take a snapshot on any asset at any block, for example. And that's that's our goal with every like on-demand custom service we've done that we would productize it. Now, in, in case, it's not fair to say that it's not been successful because, um, because it's never been really released. And that technology will be used in the Parsec network. It's on the roadmap. It's called Parsec Hybrid. And uh, we're very bullish on it, actually. It's just uh, further down down the roadmap. And the triggers um, were actually successful. But uh, when you think the, the packaging was, was wrong. So we have now implemented pretty much triggers in, in the Tsunami API, which is the, we call now we call them now the real-time filters. And we've uh, had large DeFi protocols saying that, you know, this is a problem solver. This is a game changer for them, like getting push based things onto their front. And this is what they have needed. This is something no one else has offered. So we just repackage it into a new product with additional functionality, with index chains, dedicated endpoints. And, and now everything has come together. It's actually, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very bullish. The, mo the move that we did, the pivot from, from the web portal to, uh, to an API, and, and uh, the Parsec network uh, is, has been 100% the right decision. Is Anatoly from Solana still a supporter? Uh, yeah, he's so, so we're still working with, with the Solana Foundation. Um, it's just that we haven't really done much with the Solana blockchain because right now for the Tsunami and Data Lakes, the focus has been EVM compatible chains like Polygon, Avalanche, but we do intend to um, support Solana in the future. Any talks with Sui? I just had a call with Evan Cheng uh, two days ago. Definitely plans with Sui. Mm -hmm. The Binance question. Um, I will, of course, as you all know, I cannot discuss specific listings. But as I mentioned on a previous AMA, one listing has been confirmed. A really, really good one. I think the community will be happy. It will bring new, uh, new, new people, a new venue for new people and being able to trade um, the PRQ token. Um, we're just figuring when is the best time to actually do the listing. Is NK still a priority for a long term? So NK is, as a product, is we're not currently planning on doing it. But the NK technology, the MPC wallet generation, we're going to use it for Parsec hybrid uh, for, for on-chain, off-chain task automation. And this has been demanded. Can get down to a bigger market crash and Parsec has to choose between Tsunami and IQ development, which is better ROI. Well, there doesn't have to be that choice because um, IQ protocol, IQ Labs, the company, and Parsec are actually separate teams with some overlapping uh, founders, uh, closely linked, of course, because um, Parsec just built an IQ data lake, which is awesome. Right now, it solves all of IQ protocols problems in in the back end, and and Parsec is utilizing IQ protocol fungible token version for the token. So it's a symbi symbiotic relationship, but it's separate teams and separate budgets. So IQ protocol raised its own money uh, to keep developing, and Parsec has its own budget. So it's not like one one pot. It's not one company. It's not one team. Mm -hmm. Hi, Tom. When do you see the crypto sphere bottoming 2023? Um, obviously, just speculation on my part. I think 2023 is, is reasonable. I'm. Um, it might happen end of this year, but yeah, 2023 probably. Um, best case scenario, I see things slowly turning around second half of 2023. If not, then 2024. Again, just subjective opinion and not financial advice.
So sentiment is actually an all-time high just in terms of leadership and the team, just because, you know, despite the market and everything. And the reason is that we've achieved proper product market fit. I mean, we had it before, but now it, it's it's on a whole new level with the release of Tsunami. And now it's just expanding it. Like we have we have massive amounts of clients in in in, in the pipeline. The need for the products, it's validated. And now it's just expansion, just growth. So this is actually very, very motivating for, for the whole team. And this is why uh, sentiment is, is at all time high. And everyone knows we just need to survive the bear market and things will get better in terms of um, asset prices and, and people coming into crypto and more people building in crypto. But for this, we need to work hard in the bear market. Any chance of IQT launching this year? Un unlikely, this year unlikely. Uh, the reason being um, like, obviously the market conditions are bad. Lots of projects have put out their uh, token launches. Um, and um, this is a factor, but not the determining factor. We can't launch in a, in a bad market because good projects will always perform. And um, the, the main reasons are that the product isn't really live yet. We need to show the product liveness, some adoption, users, uh, protocol revenue, um, a mature uh, community before, before launching. So I think it, it makes sense to wait a little bit. <clears throat> How much time do you think IQ and Parsec need to um, to make an impact on the market? Well, I'm hoping that we could uh, reach, uh, let's say, market leading position in in blockchain data, or at least top two, top three, like by by the next uh, by the next bull run. And the bear market is the best time to actually um, achieve this position. Any thoughts on making PRQ staking available on Ethereum or Polygon? Um, as I said, um, the fungible token version of the IQ protocol hasn't been um, hasn't been a priority right now, so I don't have any any ETA. Many of us don't like BSC. Um, is, is there a reason for this that that uh, people don't like BSC? I. Uh, I understand that it's maybe more centralized in some chains, but if you you know it's it's similar to to a lot of chains really. So especially considering that I think Binance is one of the biggest, most successful companies in in crypto and one of the most successful companies in the world at all. I I actually wouldn't worry about BSC again. Just my subjective opinion. Do you have to get permission from a blockchain such as Algo or Sol to index their data like you have with the, with their current blockchains? No, we don't. We don't have to. Um, we don't have to um, get any permissions because we can run their nodes and uh, we can embed our own software into their nodes. But we always work together with the teams of these layer one uh, blockchains because well, we might need technical uh, support. Uh, they can refer clients to us and we do co-marketing together, among other things. IQT airdrop for PRQ stakers is still going on. What are the changes due to the delayed IQT launch? So uh, obviously everyone who stakes still gets an airdrop and the longer you hold and the bigger the stack you, you hold in IQ will be proportionate to your airdrop. But the airdrop will happen, of course, after launch of the token. Remember that PRQ would be considered a utility token, not a security. Do you think there is a scenario where regulations come into play, where securities get hit, but Parsec remains untouched? It's difficult to say. I mean, it's, it's the pressure is mostly coming from the U.S. SEC, and uh, I depends what kind of uh, 
what kind of route they take. Uh, they can declare all tokens securities by default. And, and uh, that means just we would have to do a list from, from US exchanges. Um, who knows how how they will there is no clear definition, you know, from their side actually. So it's uh, it's difficult to say. Currently, I, I see no risk. I mean, we have legal opinions from U.S. law offices saying that, uh, according to the Howey test, it's not a security; it's a utility token. How come that there seems to be such a big disconnect between the massive interest that Parsec is currently experiencing in token renting? That's because uh, the majority of, of uh, the clients and users are A, either uh, running the trial version, they have not paid. B, they, they are um, putting together requirements for the dedicated data lakes. So uh, the revenue hasn't come in yet. <clears throat> so... I think I would uh, I would recap a bit what's uh, what's coming. Mm, the move to the Parsec network with with Tsunami and the data lakes has been incredibly successful. The right pivot, uh, the right uh, use case, a perfect product market fit. Now it's just about scaling, building out the functionality, and getting more clients. Uh, more blockchains coming. Two have already been integrated, and there will be at least two more coming. So announcements marketing amas developer workshops new data lakes uh gen general data lakes like the fungible token data lake as well as um public data lakes for specific protocols and that we will co-market with these protocols as well as private data lakes for for clients what else um web web 2 clients um major steps made in that direction no no timing that i can uh, say but uh, some good progress there, very interesting use cases. And finally, they are serious. Public SDK will, will intertwine uh, well with, uh, with the new tokenomics in DAO and basically make up our second open platform where anyone can build, deploy, and run their um, data lakes, their data solutions, their data applications on, on the Parsec network by staking PRQ. And of course, uh, next year, Atlas, which is a uh, retail facing application to, to get data and analytics for, for on chain data. Mm -hmm. the, the, these are the things, uh, as well as uh, the confirmed listing. Uh, no, no ETA on that, but uh, it's, it's ready, it's prepared. So whenever we decide to pull, pull the trigger. Let's see, have I missed something? Okay, we have a couple of, of new questions here. I read an article, I think I wrote it, might be wrong, where you're likening Google's indexing behaviors to what Parsec may be after. Well, pretty much, I mean, uh, we, we uh, aim to become the Google of blockchain. So um, it's, it's a mix of Google and AWS, I guess, where you can store that data and, and use it for your front end and back end. Um, yeah, it's, uh, we, we have huge plans pretty much to become market leader in, in the data space and, uh, and become the go-to full suit back end uh, solution for every web free application or any web two business that aims to integrate blockchain. Indeed, we will index uh, the majority of web free data. And thank you as well. Um, yeah, I think that's that's uh, that's it for for today. Um, I think we should be doing more of these because I, I don't expect uh, myself to leave for any conferences this month. So I will keep you all posted on the progress and uh, Q4 and be on the lookout for some of the things I mentioned. They are already prepared, already built. Uh, it, it's just internal testing and, and a lot of these uh, progresses will, will go live. So there is a lot to look forward to. 
and uh, morale is high despite market conditions. So I hope I hope the same remains for you. So stay strong, everyone, uh, in this in this uh, very difficult time in, in in the world and and in the markets. Things will get better eventually. Take care, and and see you next time.